Hello, I'm Jim Roddy, author of The Walk-On Method to Career and Business Success. I wrote The Walk-On Method to share a life-changing lesson that I learned the hard way. So I'm a cancer survivor, and after a business executive friend of mine learned that, he said to me, oh, now that I know that you had cancer, I understand why you're so driven and why you do everything with a purpose. But his take wasn't quite right. I didn't wake up every day thinking about myself as a cancer survivor. But as I reflected more about what drove me, I realized that I attacked cancer the same way that I approached my role as a basketball walk-on at Gannon University in my hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania. So for those of you not familiar with small college basketball, which I'm thinking is most of the planet Earth, Gannon was a small college basketball powerhouse in the late 1980s. And for those of you who aren't sports fans, a walk-on is a member of a college sports team who doesn't have a scholarship, but everybody else on the team does. So I realized that my walk-on approach and my attitude didn't just help me beat cancer, it guided me in my professional life as well. When I was 23, I launched my own sports magazine, and then in my 30s, I worked my way up the ladder to become company president at a technology publisher. I realized the behavior pattern that I established as a walk-on through four years of commitment, hard work, perseverance, and resiliency is the blueprint for professional success, both mine and yours. I truly believe that. So I tested that hypothesis. What if I interviewed 10 or 20 or 30 fellow former walk-ons about their college experience and their professional path? Would I learn that the walk-on method paid uncommon dividends for them too? Well, I can tell you after more than five years of interviews with dozens of former walk-ons, the answer to my question is yes. An overwhelming, screaming at the top of the lungs, yes. Each walk-on's individual path to career success was unique, but the mindset, the skills, and the behaviors that they developed, and the outcomes they achieved after college, they were similar and remarkable. That's because ordinary people will accomplish extraordinary feats when their energy is properly channeled. The walk-on method will help you do that. In the book, we feature 30 underdogs who became extraordinary, and they'll show how you can too. Let me share a few of those underdog stories with you through the lens of the five-step walk-on method. So step number one is take a big shot. Anybody can make a layup. Don't sell yourself short when you're setting your next career-related goal. Don't contemplate what you really want and then aim for something less just to play it safe. Anybody can do that. Instead, take a big shot. A great example of that is Colleen Healy. She's featured in chapter 10 of the book. So she's a native of Willimantic, Connecticut, and she accepted a scholarship to play basketball at Division II New Haven. Now, she was the first in her middle-class family to attend college, and she said New Haven was more of a default versus a decision. First uh, college to show interest in her, and she said, absolutely, I'll take it. Now, she didn't get a lot of encouragement from other folks. In fact, an employee at her high school said she overheard this conversation, Colleen will never pass a class in college. But Colleen started at New Haven and had a productive start on the basketball team. So she led her team in minutes and she was second in points. But after a game one time, she just decided, I want more. She packed up all her belongings, drove home through a blizzard. During that drive, her car caught on fire. So she hitchhiked to get closer to home. Then she announced to her parents that she was dropping out of school because her goal was to play for Division I Power University of Connecticut. She said, I don't want to be 30 years old and wonder if I was good enough. She committed at that young age to take that big shot. So she ended up working at the UConn camp as a counselor. She then called Gino Ariema, now in the Basketball Hall of Fame, on her rotary phone, right, dialed that up. And he said the best that he could do is she could be a manager for a year and then try out for the team the following year. He said no guarantee whatsoever. She said, I'll take it. I'll take that chance on myself. So Colleen goes from being a scholarship athlete to sweeping floors, filling water bottles, being the first at practice to turn on the lights. Well, she ended up making the team and then worked her way uh, and worked her way on into the rotation. She really focused on her defense and hustling more, also rededicated herself in the classroom, and she became a key reserve for three NCAA tournament teams. After graduation, she kept taking a big shot. She moved south to pursue a career in medical sales advancing to senior positions at two multi-billion dollar companies over the course of 22 years. And again, always striving to take that bigger shot, she left the medical field to become a consultant and co-found a leadership organization where today she speaks to corporations and student athletes across the United States. She says, you never know when your day is gonna come. Colleen Healy, great example of taking that big shot. 
Walk on method step number two is make a passion statement. So that's passion with a P, not fashion with an F, a passion statement. Prepare with passion, practice with passion, and then play with passion. So too many people wish that their dream is gonna come true, but it's not enough to give your all only at the moment that the opportunity presents itself. Don't wish for your chance to come. Don't wait for it to come. Walk on to your dream. So walk-ons, of course, play with passion, but first they prepare with passion, and then they practice with passion. Great example of that is Dave Martin. He's featured in Chapter 9 of the book. So he was a walk-on at Cal State Chico, a Division II school uh, in California, and he walked onto their track team. Now, he wasn't your stereotypical, uncommonly industrious, high-commitment walk-on that we feature in the book. He says he just kind of showed up at school because he didn't have a place to live anymore. And he went to Cal State Chico because he said they had a party school reputation. He said he was just floating through life. And he was kind of bored with what was going on at school and he liked running. So he literally walked on the track and said to the coach, can I run on the track team? And the coach said, well, you can try. And the way Dave describes his coach, he said he was a combination of mean and grumpy and old, even though it wasn't that old. But he says that coach forced him to make a commitment. And Dave realized, maybe I should try my best for once. Maybe I should sacrifice. Maybe I should start sleeping. Maybe I should really focus on training. He said, I saw what I was missing. I wasn't putting forth enough effort. He ended up becoming a three-time Division II All-American decathlete, a school record holder, and was eventually inducted into the Cal State Chico Athletics Hall of Fame. Now, he was an exercise science major and didn't just apply himself on the track. He applied himself in school as well, decided to really test himself academically, and then additionally pursued a career as a physician. He said, I didn't think of myself as doctor material, but going into medicine, my thought process was, I am gonna outwork people. I'm gonna stay up longer than other people. I'm gonna study longer. I'm gonna overcome everybody else's talent or everybody else's genius by outworking them. Well, today he's the owner, he's actually Dr. David Martin, and he's the owner of Embrace, which is a medical center for advanced gynecology and women's wellness in Tennessee. He's also an associate professor at East Tennessee State in their Department of Surgery and Family Medicine. So Dave Martin, great example of somebody making a passion statement and learning how to do it. Walk-on method step number three is about obstacles. We call it run uphill. We say running uphill, embracing obstacles takes longer, but it makes you stronger. Now, we're taught by everybody, for most everybody, I guess, that to avoid obstacles, seek the path of least resistance. And then if an obstacle, difficult situation comes our way, we're supposed to shrink, right? We close our eyes and we're supposed to get apprehensive when difficulty faces us. So what walk-ons do is they don't avoid obstacles. When they see a hill in front of them, they don't stop. They run up that hill because they know on the other end of that experience, they're gonna be battle tested. So when you encounter a career challenge and see everyone around you wishing the moment will pass, show courage and jump headlong into the problem. Convert it into an opportunity or a victory. In chapter 12 of the walk-on method, we profile Todd Svoboda, who is a great example of this running uphill philosophy. So after his junior year at Division II Northern Kentucky, where he was on an athletic scholarship, he had averaged 18 points, 11 rebounds a game. He was on track to become the school's first ever 1,000-point, 1,000-rebound player in the school history. Also, he was playing tennis, and he won the conference singles title, uh, in, and he was also named the outstanding male student athlete for the conference. And at six foot eight, he was literally the big man on campus at Northern Kentucky. But he gave up all those senior accolades to go walk on at the University of Kentucky and legendary coach Rick Pitino. So he did that also to pursue an engineering degree as well. He could have uh, achieved one at Northern Kentucky, but they had a more difficult three and two engineering program, three years at Northern Kentucky, two years at UK. And he said, I'm gonna take that more difficult path academically and also ac- uh, academically and athletically. Now, all that he had at University of Kentucky was the opportunity to try out. Right. And so instead of saying we're going to guarantee you on the team because of what you did at Division two school, maybe you can make the team. Maybe you won't. Well, he decides to take that shot. And all summer he works with a strength and conditioning coach. He also takes summer classes and the fellow chemical engineering majors, when they said, oh, where are you coming from? What are you planning on doing? He said he's trying to planning on uh, playing on the UK basketball team. And they said, you're going to miss too many classes. We can barely keep up without uh, without missing classes. Now, he decided, I'm still going to do it, despite those guys saying it's probably not the best path. Now, when he's playing against some of these guys at UK, he realizes the guy in front of him on the roster is Jamal Mashburn, who ended up being a great NBA player, legend at University of Kentucky. 
And the way Todd describes it, he says, Mashburn had a move that even if he knew it was coming, he couldn't stop it. But he realized, Amen, I may not be the most talented person out here, but I can outwork everybody else. I'm going to push him to get better. And he goes from being the star of the team to when they're taking team photos in preseason. They took some photos with Todd and some photos without him in case they didn't decide to keep him on the team. What a big difference. Well, a few days into practice, Coach Patino calls Todd to his office and says, you're welcome to be a part of our team, but let me tell you this, you're not going to play. And so Todd said, there was no doubt in my mind what choice I was going to make. So he goes from averaging 18 points per game at Northern Kentucky to scoring 24 for the entire season at the University of Kentucky. He goes from playing 38 minutes in one night to 38 minutes the entire season across the 13 games that he got in for. He ended up becoming a fan favorite because of his enthusiasm on the bench. Now he goes and takes that attitude and that degree and he ends up working at Lexmark as an engineer for 18 years. A lot of accolades, North American Consultant of the Year, two time in the Achievers Club. He also received a patent. He filled several different roles in that organization, always stepping outside his comfort zone to see how he can get better. And then he did that additionally, and he ended up joining the East Kentucky Power Cooperative as a senior engineer, a new role on a new team. And today he still seeks the mentoring of those with more experience, still challenges himself with the opportunities outside his comfort zone. Todd Savota, Spavota still runs uphill. Now walk on method step number four, we call it no fuss, all must. So two parts of this step. No fuss means control your emotions, especially the negative ones as you seek to advance your career. Let's say you got passed over for a promotion that you thought you deserved. Just shake your head for a moment in private and then resolve to work harder and perform better. If you need to have a difficult talk with a coworker or a client, ignore the pit in your stomach. Initiate that conversation. All must is the letters M-U-S and it stands for maximize unique strengths. Most of the walk-ons we profile were shorter, skinnier, or slower than their more gifted, talented uh, scholarship teammates. They figured that the special attitude, the special ability that they brought to their team, what was that? And then they brought that to benefit the entire organization. Great example of this is Paul Woodside. So as a teenager, he had a paralyzing stutter that really limited his opportunities. In the summer of 1981, he hadn't even decided on what college he was going to attend. But driving from his home in Virginia to his sister's place in Pennsylvania, he was driving by Morgantown, West Virginia, the home of West Virginia University. And despite his speech impediment and ignoring his emotions, uh, he walked into the West Virginia University football office in early August to speak to a coach about playing for the Mountaineers. Now, after struggling for 20 minutes to express himself, Paul and the coach stepped out on the football field where he promptly shanked his first few attempts and the coach accused him of playing a practical joke. He's like, the other assistants, did they put you up to this? Are they putting me on? Are there cameras around here? What's going on? Well, Woodside said, hold on one second, stretched out and began making his kicks. And the assistant coach said, you're pretty good. We'll give you a shot if you want it. No scholarship, just a chance to make the team. So once Paul made it up to his sisters, he called home and he says, mom, I'm going to WVU, but practice starts on Monday. Meet me there with my clothes, please. Now, he had uncommon mental toughness and work ethic, ended up becoming a starter, and developed into an All-American. How did he do that? Well, when the other specialists, the kickers and the punters, they'd get their work in and then go and hit the showers, Paul would run the stadium stairs, even up to two and a half hours, so the other team, while his other teammates were practicing, the linemen, the running backs, the defense, even in nasty weather, Paul would be out there and would be running up and down the steps to get better. Now today he counsels prospective college and professional kickers as the owner and lead instructor of his organization before you kick, seeing beyond uprights. Now Paul trains his pupils on technique, of course, but his focus is helping them establish a special attitude. And that's what his chapter focuses on in the book. It says, if you don't believe in you, why should anyone else? Again, no fuss, all must. Put aside those negative emotions. Don't fuss over it. Maximize your unique strengths. Now, the final step of the walk-on method, step number five, is make them throw you out of the gym. Never, ever, 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 ever quit. Megan Lightfoot is featured in the book, and she's a great example of this. Now, she was a lifelong athlete as a youth, played volleyball, she was into swimming, basketball, but she thought, I'm not good enough to do that at a, on the level at UCLA, so I'm going to look for another sport to see if I can try. And so she decided rowing. So she goes and on her school visit, she goes into the UCLA rowing office and asks one of the coaches about trying out for the team. He says, well, here's the process, here's what you need to do, but let's be honest, you're probably going to quit. 
So she had a choice when she walked out of that office. She could have said, you're probably right, it's probably too hard, I should try to do nothing or try to do something else. But instead of giving in, she says, I'll show him, and she ramps up her commitment to become a UCLA rower. She endures the grueling workouts on the indoor rowing machines, hours of learning stroke fundamentals, treating her blisters instead of quitting like other folks did. As all the other walk-on candidates uh, stepped away, she kept showing up. She ignored the soreness, the mental fatigue, the salt water in her face. All the other tribulations ended up making the team. Now, they didn't have her in one of the boats. They had her on the sidelines. In the first race, she's not supposed to be in the boat. But somebody in the novice boat gets sick, and they say, we need somebody. And they say, hey, we would love you, Megan, to uh, jump into the boat. And she says, okay, let's do it. Well, she stays in the boat that first race and then all, all season long. So she thinks she's proved herself and they're going to want her back on the team for next year. And in the postseason meeting, that same coach says to her, hey, if you come back next year, that's great. If you don't, have a nice life. And so Megan thought to herself, what do you mean? I just worked so hard all year. Why wouldn't I come back? Why would I just work for a year and not do this again? Now, she, focused, she has a great saying. She says, keep your mind inside the boat. Forget about the negativity. Forget about the distractions. Keep your mind inside the boat. Focus on what you need to do. And she ended up doing that. She ended up making the varsity boat. She ended up making the first boat. She ended up becoming a team chaplain, uh, captain. She ended up earning a partial scholarship for her senior year. And at the end of her career, that coach said, Megan, I didn't think you're really going to last. We just didn't think that was going to happen. But she did, and she made it work. And then after graduation, she took that same walk on attitude and attained a law degree at the University of Oregon, became a family law attorney uh, with a firm in Northern California. Now, part of the way she got that job was in the interview. She said she used her walk on story to make the analogy, I know I'm inexperienced. I know you're interviewing people who have way, way more years of experience than I do. I had a similar situation at UCLA, and let me tell the end result. I had some bumps along the way, but I know I can get myself to a high level. And she has a great quote, and that's what we titled the chapter, Your Actions Perpetually Inform People About Who You Are. So those are the five steps that you need to achieve career and business success. And I want to note for you that the beauty of the walk-on method is that all these actions are within your power. You can take a big shot. You can work for it instead of just dream about it. You can prepare and practice and play with passion instead of just crossing your fingers. When you encounter an obstacle on your journey to success, you can run uphill instead of stopping or slowing down. Instead of freaking out and falling short of what you want, you can maintain emotional control and maximize your unique strengths. Lift yourself, lift your team, lift your organization. Think like a walk-on and act like a walk-on starting today. Remember, ordinary people will accomplish extraordinary feats when their energy is properly channeled. You can purchase your copy of the Walk-On Method on Amazon in paperback or ebook format. And if you want a free chapter from the Walk-On Method, plus our exclusive list of 43 Walk-On Workplace Do's and Don'ts, you can email me at jim at jimroddycba.com. That's J-I-M at J-I-M-R-O-D-D-Y-C-B-A, that's the letters A-B-C backwards, dot com. Also, I'm happy to connect with you on LinkedIn, Twitter, or through the Walk-On Method Facebook page. Thank you so much for your interest in the walk-on method, and I hope you channel your energy to accomplish extraordinary feats and make your dreams come true. Have a tremendous day.